hi there all and welcome to today's video. What we'll be talking about today is the employee ledger within uh, Business Central. Um, so before we go into some of the functionality on screen, uh, I'll just explain quickly what the employee ledger is. Um, well, it's uh, basically an addition to the purchase ledger, the payables ledger within Business Central. Uh, it's been around for a few years and noticed some uh, changes coming into it. Um, I've deployed it a few times, seen it used in uh, a few different ways, and uh, you can use it with some of the uh, the popular apps that we get out there on uh, on the app um, the app marketplace for Business Central as well. So um, let's get into it, and uh, I will show you um, the employee ledger, and uh, we'll go on to talk about things like expenses and um, payroll a little bit later. So. What we'll do first is I'm just going to search for the employees page um, within uh, my business central environment here. And this is just a demo environment. So I've got some of the um, demonstration data employees set up here. And what I'm going to do is just go into the employee card here for Esther Henderson. Um, so as you'd expect, we do have the um, different fast tabs available here to us, um, which we can expand and collapse just as you can on any other page. Um, so I'm not going to go through each of the fields here in, in great detail. I'll leave that to you guys to have a bit of a play with. But um, in the general tab here, you've got your sort of general information. You've got first name, middle name, last name. So you've got all that sort of general type of information which you would store against uh, an employee record. Um, so moving down into the address and contact, again, it's address and contact type information that you would store against an employee. Note, you do have a private email field here. So if you wanted to store that information in uh, your BC environment, you could. Um, you do have um, an alternative address code and start and end date. So, you know, if your employee was uh, moving somewhere or living somewhere else temporarily, you could store that information in your BC environment if you need to. Now, remember, of course, uh, BC might not be your master system for all of your employees. Um, you might want to integrate to another system for that. So um, you might not have to fill in all this information manually. Um, it could be that you have an integrating system that completes um, these fields for you. So um, just want to think about there. And, uh, in the administration tab here, again, it goes on. I mean, this is uh, pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend too much time going over these fields. Um, but you can add in things like the employment date. I can set a current status, you know, is the employee active, inactive or terminated? So we can sort of set this uh, this level of information against the employee. Um, we do have um, some other areas here. Um, namely the resource number field and the salesperson purchaser code fields. Um, so I can drop down here and that will take me to um, the resources list on the resource number. And if my employee on Business Central was also a resource on Business Central, I can create that link between the two records here. And in the same way, if my employee was also a salesperson or purchaser within the business, I could link them to this particular table here as well. So we can see Esther is there in the salespeople purchaser table and you can link them there together if you need to as well. Um, so to finish up here, we've got some personal data here um, against the employee, so you can store some of that information. And then you've got the payments area, which obviously is quite important if you're reimbursing your employees um, for, for expenses or other sort of costs that they may incur, um, which we want to reimburse them for. Uh, we do have an application method field here, which can either be set to manual or apply to oldest. So that's to do with the um, ledger entries for the employee. So do you want to choose what um, entry applies to which, um, or do you want the system to do that by using apply to oldest? So uh, it's up to us how we uh, how we set that application method. Um, so 
The field that connects the employee ledger to the general ledger is this one here. It's the employee posting group. So it's very similar here to the customer and vendor posting groups. If I drop down and just use um, show details here, what we've got is a single employee posting group in this particular system. Um, and that is posting to our payables account 51600, right? So if I drop down here, that is just gonna be a lookup to our GL accounts list, our chart of accounts. And we basically select the GL account to which we want this employee posting group to post to. Um, so I say we've just got one employee posting group in this particular environment, but you might want to split out your employee ledger into multiple posting groups, um, which is totally fine if you wanted to do that as well. So continuing on with the postings um, for employees, um, I can use my dimensions against employees as well. So if I come up to the top here into employee, I can go into dimensions. And this um, screen basically works in exactly the same way as the other dimension screens do in Business Central. So I can say that we need to select a department dimension for Esther when we're doing this, uh, when we're doing a, a transaction for her, um, I can also remove that as I see fit. So um, you can use dimensions on employees there, important for uh, reporting. Um, and just moving along here, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but we can store things like confidential information, qualifications, absences against employees if we need to. Um, and this action here basically takes me through to the employee ledger entries, okay? So uh, the employee ledger entries is basically the same thing as the customer or the vendor ledger entries, item ledger entries. It's basically a list of all transactions which have been made against that particular employee. Um, so we will post some employees uh, transactions um, shortly. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to this screen and just review what happens there. Um, and just finally on the employee setup, you can, if you want to upload an employee picture and store attachments there in the attachments area if you want to. Now, something to consider when we're setting up new employees um, is if I go to my search and just search for a page here called employee templates, um, this takes me to a page where I can set up um, and, uh, and edit and remove uh, my employee templates. Okay, so uh, these are basically just templates which I can use to default um, data or particular fields when I'm setting up a new employee. So I'm not gonna go through each of these fields here. It's just demo data in this particular case, guys. So um, yeah, I'll let you have a play with these, but basically you can use the employee templates to um, make it easier for yourself when you're setting up a new employee. So we've got the administration and IT employee templates. As I say, it's demo data. Um, but here, when I go back to my employees list, and if I say new, what I get is a list of those templates, which I can choose um, to basically optimize the setup of a new employee. So I don't need to fill in all that information manually. Um, some of it can be templated um, if we wanted that to be. Now, um, what we'll go ahead and do is just post a transaction against our employee. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and post a general journal, which is gonna have an expense um, on it. So we're just gonna come in here and say employee. I'm gonna pick Esther and let's just say expense for coffee. And what I'm gonna do is just say 10 GBP and I'm gonna pick my miscellaneous expense account there. Okay, so uh, what I'll go ahead and do is just say preview posting, and over here we'll get two GL entries, um, and one of those is going to 31500, um, and that's the um, 10 GBP, and here we've got 51600, 
which is basically the uh, other side of our transaction. Why is it 51600? Well, remember, Esther has uh, an employee posting group assigned to her of uh, employee expenses, and the payables account there is 51600. Okay, so that's why we see this particular account. Um, and we also get an employee ledger entry which will review after posting this um, transaction. And I'm just going to flip the sign on this here, sorry. Um, so just changing the sign on that and let me say post. And we've posted the journal, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is go back to my employees and I'm just gonna show you Esther's employee ledger entry. So let's go employee and ledger entries and what we've got is here's our line expense for coffee um, for minus um, 10 GBP okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and reimburse that expense um, so in order to do that I'm going to go to my payment journal and I'm going to use a function here called suggest employee payments now if I come in here and I'm not going to run through these fields, but I just press OK. What we get pulled through here is um, a, a list of the transactions which uh, we have against that vendor. So I'm just going to let me remove that one. We're not focusing on that one for now. And we're just focusing on the 10 GBP um, that we're going to reimburse Esther. OK. Um, and I won't go through sort of the any any of the other fields here. I'll leave that for another video we'll do on the payment journal. But let me go ahead and say post and yes. Okay, so if I say okay, and what we'll do now is let's go back to the employee card for Esther, and I just want to show you what's happened there on her employee card. So let's go employee ledger entries. Um, and now what you can see is we've got a payment come through for Esther and the um, open tick box is unpopulated for this one and the original expense that we posted for her coffee there and that's because the, um, um, the expense has now been reimbursed, okay? Um, so um, yeah, I guess you wouldn't normally use this type of functionality to reimburse expenses within Business Central. Uh, and that's mainly because um, you don't want users coming in and having to post journals to get um, their, their expenses reimbursed. And there are apps out there which we can use to integrate with Business Central or we can import a file which um, will allow us to submit and reimburse expenses. OK, so just did it here. In this, uh, in this way on this journal to show you how that works. Um, so one of the other things that you can do in the employee ledger is, uh, is obviously payroll, but I should say that Business Central doesn't do that out of the box, you know, so you, you would need a separate payroll solution. You can, again, get apps within Business Central that do payroll. Um, there are a few out there or equally most payroll solutions these days you can integrate to Business Central using an API or you can export a file um, that will uh, that will let you import the data into Business Central as you wish. Um, OK, so that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. Um, I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, do reach out. Um, but thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.